happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Bea or B, however you prefer. It's a little bit hard to say Bea sometimes, I know. I'm originally from Hungary and I'm here uh, for almost two years in Nelson, so I call that home now. And today we are going to talk about leveraging the power of social media for your business. A little bit about myself. I'm a social media consultant and manager. I own my own business. It's called Be Social. And um, I would like to present you my fellow guests today who have attended an amazing workshop with me and Sarah and Alison in February and March, and they will share some success stories from their own learnings. So this is Kim Rosser from GK Events Hire, Rosemary Lelo, she's a wedding celebrant, Stephen Robertson, you might have seen him at the Saturday market, he's a putter and he's also working at Nelson Pottery Supplies, and Daniela Borlando from Gelato Roma. So they will be our <coughs> surprise guest speakers today. So as you see, most of you are on Facebook. This is actually not surprising because as the statistics showed us, last year there was a really nice social media statistics and report coming out. Actually, 2.7 million uh, Kiwis are on Facebook as a daily user. And that's not surprising. Uh, most of us are on Facebook for a reason or another. And um, by June 2017, there were 2 billion global users. Now it's over 2.2 billion. So there are a lot of us globally on Facebook and using Facebook, either for a private reason and also a lot of people are using it now for business reasons. Why would we use social media for business? Um, I thought I'll do a little recap first because for, for some of you it might be a familiar thing, but maybe not to everyone. Social media is a really good way to connect and stay in touch with your customers. It's a great way to reach them, to get your business visibility, and just to interact with the people you want to engage with. Whether you have a product whether you, or you have a business, a service as a business, it's a great way to market to them and to reach them. And eventually, I reckon that most of you are business owners here, you eventually want to sell your product or service as well, right? You're all business owners in a way and you have your unique businesses. This is important that you want to share what your business is about with your customers. You would like to show them what is your product about, you would like to tell them what is your service about. And you can do that in a really good, authentic way. You can also give a solution to people's needs, right, through social media. This is a really good way to engage. You can share why would they want to use the, your product? Why would they want to use your service? It's really important. Think about how they think, not what you want to say, and provide a solution for them. Why would they come and engage with you? This is part of the storytelling, of the social media storytelling. Social media is an amazing platform to share your story with your customers, tell your story, and then sell your story eventually, where everything comes back to this social interaction. I feel that social media is starting to shift back to this very significantly and very much these days. Especially if you think about the overwhelming ads these days, the overwhelming information in your newsfeed. There are so many things happening and so many people just get annoyed about it, right? So what can you do as a marketer, as a business owner, to, to stand out, to provide real valuable content? Create an online community around your business. Create an online community around your product and your service. You can do it. Your page is your platform. That's your shop. Think about it as a shop, okay? It's 
it's like an online space for you to create that community. How can you, com how can you actually create that? By providing the unique content, the advice, the inspiration, the great customer service, and by interacting with your fans, the people who like your page, the people who come to your page, the people who interact with your page. If you look at social media and you want to use it for business, it's a really good way to think about it as an asset, as a tool for your business in marketing. Don't rely on it. You can, but it might not work that well. I always recommend that you have your digital presence, you have your website, and then use social media as an extra asset to link back to your website, to actually direct the audience back to your website, because your website is owned by you. You paid for it, you have a domain. Facebook and the content you put up there is not owned by you, it's owned by Facebook. And it can be taken down anytime or it can disappear anytime. Now, the key questions you would like to ask yourself when you look at social media marketing, it's basically very similar to what you would ask yourself in general as a marketer. Your big why. Why would you want your business on social media? What's your goal with it? Why do you want to have your business on Facebook? The who, number two. This is really important as well. Who is your target audience? Are you clear on that? Do you know your customers? Because you will be talking to these people on Facebook or on other social media platforms. You have to know them so you can communicate the way they want to hear the messages you're providing. You can say something that you think is important, but it might be not resonating with your audience. You need to know what they're looking for what they need, and you have to create your messages and posts around this. You have to create content around your customers. So if you know your customers, it's great because you'll be able to provide a specific content that matches their interests, their needs, their values, their emotions sometimes. Number three, where can you find them? Are they on Facebook or are they on other platforms? This might be an interesting question for you to ask. Facebook is one of the biggest platforms and the most commonly used, but it might not be the one for your business. That's why you have to know your why and your who, because if you know who you're talking to, you'll know if they are on Facebook and actively using it and how they're using it. Or if they're on Instagram or they're on Snapchat, where are they, right? It can be a, an age thing as well, the spread of Facebook users is actually very wide. So a lot of people from every gender and every age group is on. But you can also see that sometimes Instagram, Snapchat would attract a younger audience. Twitter sometimes attracts an older audience. It's just something to think about as well. Is Facebook really the right platform for your business? In general, it's a good platform, but just give it a second thought, please. Number four, what content you want to share? This links back very much to the who. Again, you want to create the content that is valuable for your audience. And then the when. When are they actually online? When are they using social media platforms? You have really good insights built in in Facebook you can use to see when is your audience actually active? Are they more active in the morning? Are they active during the lunch breaks? Are they active at night when their kids go to sleep? It's up to you and your business. It's very specific to find that out. And when you know when they are active, that's when you want to post, because that's when you'll have the biggest chance to get the engagement and their interest. <coughs> Leveraging social media for your business, the social part again. Please welcome our four special guests today. And I would like to invite Kim first to come and join me on the mini stage and uh, I'll give her the uh, opportunity to share a little bit what has she figured out and uh, what are her learnings and ideas that she's started in implementing and actually what works for her based on all these things that we just talked a little bit about. 
Yeah. Please. <coughs> um, so my name's Kim Rosser and my husband Gareth and I um, own GK Events Hire, which is a reasonably new hire business in Nelson. So we make giant games out of wood um, and we also hire and make um, rustic furniture and um, hire vintage items and custom build things for people. Um, so I came to this course, this, um, your program, because uh, I thought I was doing an okay job with my um, Facebook and I had recently started doing Instagram but was a little bit concerned about whether I was um, getting my business name out to people, the right people in Nelson and doing that without paying lots of money uh, because we're new and we're quite tight on the budget. Um, so the main things that I got out of attending the workshop was in general my um, organic reach which is how much people are seeing my stuff without paying for it. Originally it was uh, about 100 to 200 people for each of my posts, so Facebook lets you see how much people are seeing your um, posts without paying. And after attending, that jumped pretty dramatically. Um, I noticed more or less as soon as I started applying what I had learned, the post reach was between 400, uh, around about 400 to 600 people seeing things without paying. And then um, most recently, finished the course and did a post and got over a thousand organic reach and um, over a hundred um, likes and comments, which was a bit shocking, so I've worked out that I am on the right track. Um, so what are the things that I got out of um, the program that I have made sure that I've kept applying? So I've got a wee list to share with you. Um, <laughs> so the main thing I worked out was when my audience is on Facebook. Um, so I was kind of posting randomly in the day, because I'm a primary school teacher and have a two-year-old, so I was kind of trying to do posts whenever. Um, I worked out that it is better for me to do them between around about six o'clock and nine o'clock at night to get that market in Nelson that I need to reach. So sometimes I'd post at midnight, which is when I do my GK job after teaching, and I would only get people from England liking my posts. <laughs> Um, all my friends would be like, oh wow, they're really interested in what I'm doing, but not really. The people in Nelson were just sort of missing it. So I started to post at set times and I learnt um, how to schedule my posts. So I would do a post at midnight, but then change the time on it, which you can do, and it would then go live at about 7 o'clock in the morning, or I would make it again at 8 o'clock at night. So scheduling my posts so I got as much organic reach as I could before I paid for the advertising. That. I also worked out that my main um, target market is on Facebook, so I'd learned Instagram and Instagram felt quite good because I was getting people following me from um, New York and Hollywood event planners and getting really good feedback and I was thinking, wow, this is great, but actually they're not even going to hire from me. So I um, still post on Instagram and then it can automatically put it onto Facebook, but not everything, so it wasn't stuff that they were going to hire, I would just do it on Facebook. Um, yeah, so I sort of directed myself a little bit more so I wasn't wasting so much time on Instagram and hashtagging, which I took for me. Um, and I also don't pay for any advertising on Instagram now too, because it's a waste of money, just on Facebook. Um, I, through that, worked out to be more selective about when I boosted posts. So I would um, post something and get as much organic reach as I could. So I tend to wait 24 hours before I boost a post. So my friends and people that follow us would like it, share it, and then when the likes stopped coming in, then I would pay for a boost. And that's been quite effective, um, sort of add on to that and get new people to see. And I would not boost everything. So I could only boost it if it's worth boosting. Um, also worked out the importance of having really good photos, and we'll be a bit lucky because in events planning you get people's wedding photos all the time, and they are looking from photographers, but actually um, really thinking myself about taking good photos of things, uh, behind the scenes photos, um, photos, I tried to sort of bring my family into it, because that's part of our business, but um, related family photos. So I also changed my posts so that they were more engaging, so I asked, started to ask lots of questions of people, and I found um, that reach was much improved when people were um, clicking wow and love instead of like um, and asking them questions so that they would comment and I made sure that if people comment on my posts, I comment back. 
or I have some kind of connection with them straight away. I'd normally just go, oh yeah, like, like, I'm really busy. But actually, and you need to start communicating with people. Another thing I started to do was take more notice of who else is in industries that relate to my business in Nelson. So Rosie um, is a celebrant, which kind of ties in nicely. Mm -hmm. But um, through this course and also as I started to meet other people in Nelson, actually connecting with other businesses online. So I have started to try and tag as many other people and businesses as I can in my posts. And then all of their um, followers, because often if you do that, they'll share your post on their page and then all of their followers will see your stuff as well. Um, a lot of Rosie's and my stuff connect, so we've started to sort of um, share each other's things, which has been really handy. Um, Uh, I learned how to read Graham on Instagram, which was very helpful. So other photographers share pictures of our stuff, and so I um, started to use their photos instead of my photos. So if you read Graham their stuff, then all of their audience again is seeing your thing. So um, you talked about an app, so I found the app and learned how to use it, and that was really, really helpful. Uh, Facebook really acts a bit like an email anyway, so on Messenger, people message me on Messenger just like emails. And that annoyed me at the start, but I have realised actually Messenger and um, emails are together. You can't really separate them anymore. Thank you so much. Please give a clap to Kim. And I would like to invite now Rosie to the floor. Rosie, the wedding celebrant and MC. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was quite similar to him. I felt as though I, I knew what I was doing on social media, I'm quite active on there, but um, it was nice to go to your course and get solid feedback that I was doing most of it right, um, so that was a bit of a confidence boost as well. What I really took away from it was really asking questions and getting engagement back from my customers. Um, I try and um, not boost posts, now I do advertising, so I can target my audience specifically. Boosting a post, I would just boost a post and like him, I've waited now for the organic reach and if it's going well, then I will boost it. But more often now, I will wait for a, for a prime opportunity and I'll advertise myself without sort of advertising at the same time. You can't really push yourself onto your Facebook customers, they have to sort of want to want you naturally. Um, so recently I did a targeted advertising and normally I would get maybe one or two likes to my page at this time. Over a seven day period I got over 30 new likes. So to me that was a $30 win because that's how much I paid, so one dollar per like. But I, I sort of thought that was all right. <laughs> um, my thing on Facebook and Instagram are live videos and I was really encouraged by Bayer to do that more. Live videos are the way of the future, and, um, and that, that's my thing, public speaking, so, so that's quite a natural venue for me to go. What I would do though, is I would be walking from my car to my office job, and um, I'd just talk about random stuff. So now I've got more focus, and um, just more relevant information. So yes, I can talk about me and what's happening in my life, but I also maybe talk about the weather and what, what's gonna be coming up for, um, for weddings specifically, if it's going to rain, have you got a plan B option, everything like that. So I, I'm definitely more focused. I know my target audience um, and yeah. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Rosie. And I would like to invite now Daniela from Gelato Roma to share her success stories. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Daniela from Gelato Roma. Uh, we produce artisan gelato here in Nelson. And uh, just want to tell you a little bit about my story with Facebook for business, because I actually opened my first um, business Facebook page five years ago. And at that time, it was a piece of cake, honestly. It was easy. And just with a little bit of money, I got huge results. And uh, when I opened this, you know, our family business Facebook page, I was like, what's going on? You know, like, <laughs> I can't get likes, what's going on? Everything changed. And um, 
since then, like a year ago, at least when I opened this Facebook page, everything changed again. So it's very hard to get organic reach on Facebook. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very hard, right? It, the biggest outcome I got from the work. Um, like, I was a bit reluctant at the beginning because I thought I know enough about the technical part of it and I thought, I don't know, okay, let's give it a go. And uh, <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> um, but the main thing for me was that uh, I'm more like a mad person. So like I'm okay with the technical and it's okay. The platform is quite straightforward, right? But the thing that was missing were the content, right? Um, I'm not a creative person, and uh, from Bea I learned I can be creative. It's amazing, can I? You know, and uh, that was the main thing for me: to uh, learn how to be creative, and I learn um, that it's actually not about us as a business. It's not about my business. Uh, I, mean, I have a great product. I want everybody knows about it, right? But it's not about me. It's about them. What is that that create that kind of engagement? What is that? What's the information that I can give them? What's the product I can give them? What's the fun I can give them to give them a reason to follow us and be part of this, you know, community they are talking about? Thank you so much. Give a big clap to Daniela. Just one question here. Is everyone familiar with the ads manager on Facebook? Not everyone. Okay, just a quick intro of that. You can boost posts on Facebook and then you can use the ads manager that is a more detailed advertising tool for your business and it's much more effective if you use that. So you might want to check that out. We'll also have a course on advertising later on in May. So if you want to learn about it, it's a good place to do that. But what I want to say here, advertising can be really tricky because if you don't know your audience, you don't know your why, you don't know what's your goal with Facebook for your business. If you want to get visibility, if you want to reach people, you want to sell to people, you have to know exactly what you want out of it. Because if you don't know that, you can waste a lot of money on advertising. And you can create content and create ads, even in the ads manager, and not have results, because you don't know your audience. You don't know what they resonate with. So before going to advertising, it's a good way to draft your mini strategy, answer these six questions that we talked about, and just really refine and define why you are there on social media, what you want to achieve with it, because that's how you can create the content that will be relevant for your fans and the people who like your page, the people you want to target and reach, and then this can bring results in your advertising much better. Okay. Now, we will move on to how to get social with the people on social media. Connecting, engaging, tagging, sharing, recommending, you've got a million plus one opportunities to use. First one here, we will go through specific examples from these four businesses now, so you can really see where's the trick, okay? Where's, where's the little piece of information you can adapt to your business? Now, this is from Kim's business. Which beautiful mirror would you choose? Here's a question it actually encourages engagement right away. You ask a question, you want people to answer that. It's a great way to engage with your audience. Ask a question, how simple is that? And ask a question that actually requires an answer that is bigger than a yes or a no, okay? Where you would like to ask them to elaborate a little bit their response. Because they can, of course, reply with a yes or a no, but this is a good way for you to tap into your audience and actually know and learn about their needs. What are they interested in? What are they looking for? Uh, which product of yours is the best fit for them? Or which service would they like to engage with when you have different services? Or you can fine tune that service. Would they like to have the option A or rather the option B? And then here we have a lot of pictures of beautiful mirror frames. 
vintage antique gold mirrors. Good visuals here as well. And a call to action here, contact us. Okay, you want them to contact you. Okay. Sneak peek is a good way to show behind the scenes and what really goes on in your business. And it just again creates this connection with your audience. So here we have a question again. What do you think this super exciting new hire item is? Available for the 2018-19 wedding season, yay. We have an amazing picture of an item. It's kind of um, interesting because you don't exactly know what it is. So it's, it goes well with the question. It sparks interest. It does say something about the wedding season. So you can already feel what's happening there. Now, behind the scenes is similar, right? Here we have lots of higher stock. So, yeah, and then this is another good example for uh, behind the scenes sneak peek when you're building a teepee for a customer and your helper is, co is caught eating the job. Mm -hmm. So here we have a really good example of Rosie. She took a really good selfie. Selfies are good. Uh, <laughs> But it's a lovely picture, really good, vibrant colors, good framing. And the message here, I would like to point out the message here, it's really important. She's running her wedding business. And privacy here is quite a big thing. So you might have businesses where you don't want to expose your clients. It, it's just not the right fit. You don't want them to be exposed when you're massaging them or they don't want to share their pictures publicly. So it's, it's a very fine topic you have to look at very carefully as a business owner. Here we come to the Nelson Pottery Supplies. This is an Instagram page. So those of you who are not familiar with Instagram, it's all about beautiful photos. Steve's got a really good profile with really good pictures of, her, of his pottery and then the supplies. Yeah, so basically he got a question on it. And by just simply replying and commenting on it, he got into an interaction, a communication with that person, and the person eventually bought something from him. So little things like this, just getting back to the person, communicating, this helps. Yeah, again, you know, during the workshop, I was obviously inspired somehow, <laughs> and I thought, what should I do? And we have this very nice, actually, take home pack. And um, so I did create this post and uh, I, again, uh, probably I waited for one day to get the natural um, organic reach and I got probably 15 or 20 likes or something like that. And I um, create the app on um, the app manager platform and um, with only like $15 or something, I got 100 likes and... Nine shares. And... Uh, there was lots of comments, yeah, like, uh, I think it's 120, yeah, 108 comments. comments here. So, yeah, obviously, I was very excited. <laughs> and the um, and good thing is that, you know, like, a few days ago, I was at the cafe, and my husband told me, oh, many people came and bought, you know, the ticket was yes! <laughs> it so it worked, it really yeah. worked. Yeah. <laughs> This is Rosie and her live video feed and video feed. Go check it out. She's really funny. So this is your Facebook page. And here are your tab, uh, like your um, different tags. And here is the video, videos tag. So if you click on the videos, you'll be able to see people's videos. This is where we'll check your videos too. So these are the videos that she put up. And live videos are really powerful. Why are they really powerful? Uh, they allow you to connect with your audience in a real-time basis. So, so actually, you'll see how many viewers are there live watching your show. They can comment. You can ask them to reply to you, because obviously they can't respond, but you can ask them to comment. So that's the reply. And then it becomes a social interaction. It's basically being together real-time, but online. And this is the, the um, um, live video we did with Laura at the Wild Tomato magazine. Uh, we had a snapped uh, photo page from one of our pre previous events at the BNZ Bank. It was a networking event. Some of you were there. 
and uh, we just uh, did a quick demo on how to tag a business. And we went through the whole process by doing a live video. So you want to tap into your audience and um, share your content in the appropriate time where, where you can get the maximum reach and you can reach the most people. But someone actually said, um, an expert from the industry, when, when she was asked, when is the, the best time to go live? When you're ready. So do that when you're ready. And then again, you can just share it afterwards and it will be there on your newsfeed. Live videos can have a lot of engagement and uh, interaction. If you do it well, of course, there are some tricks for that. But just go live whenever you feel ready. And some of you might not be comfortable in front of a camera. That's a, that's a fact. It's, it, it comes with practice. Rosie is a really good person to ask about her experience. And I know it's from a personal um, you know, experience too. Sometimes just filming yourself, you have to get confident with it. You have to know where to look, what to say. So it comes by practice, but don't forget there's, there's another side of your phone and you can film others and you can film your products and you can create stories by actually not being on the video yourself. So you can use video and the video option for your business without being on it if you're camera shy. Okay, so something to tap into, uh, maybe practice, check it out how it works, play with it, give it a go, and you might end up liking it and loving it. So this was the last part for the, for the presentation. Uh, I hope you got some good tips and takeaways.